If you have been with us, many thanks for keeping it on Morning at NTV. That's the hashtag on Twitter. And of course, uh, we are on Facebook streaming live as well as on YouTube. Do join and watch on Twitter the handle for the guy you're seeing is at Chris again. Do follow and let that conversation uh, continue. We are taking note on why financial or rather financing, I must emphasize, still eludes micro, small, and medium enterprises. Now, micro, small, and medium enterprises are the bulk of businesses that employ most Ugandans. Most of them are working within ranges of uh, working capital of 100, 200, 300, to 500 million Uganda shillings. Depending on where you fall, there are issues when it comes to access to credit and capital, and that is something that we are going to discuss. Just a preamble, uh, credit bureaus are essential elements of the financial infrastructure and play a key role in helping improve access to financial services, including uh, credit itself. Globally, 65 million enterprises, uh, or 40% of formal micro, small and medium businesses in developing countries have animate financing needs of up to $5.2 trillion every year. A study using the World Bank's enterprise price surveys data from 63 economies and covering more than 75,000 uh, firms found that the introduction of a credit bureau improves firms' likelihood to access finance with longer-term loans, lower interest rates, and a higher share of uh, working capital financed by banks. Well, there's a lot that we have to think about when it comes to that. We are joined by the CEO of New Grid CBR, Mr. David Opio. A very good morning, Mr. Opio. Thank you so much. And thanks Chris. for making time. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very glad that I'm here. Thank you. Now, access to finance, uh, credit, and everything that comes with mm -hmm. it is uh, something that uh, many Ugandans are grappling with. They think they need capital and they need to be able to readily receive some of this money whether it's coming from government or uh, private sector initiatives mm -hmm. or schemes that are designed to ensure that these businesses are helped however the nitty-gritty of how and the where to get this money is something that uh, is uh, pertinent to them that we need to address but before you do that just tell us about no grid uh, cbr and exactly what kind of services you're into great thank you so much um my name is david opio Obwangamoy. I am the CEO of New Grid CRB. Mm. CRB stands for, stands for Credit Reference Bureau. Okay. We are licensed by the Central Bank of Uganda and we are the first indigenous uh, credit reference bureau to be licensed. So um, mainly our mandate is to collect credit data mm. on individuals and non-individuals. Yes. And we collect this data in two meaningful and informative uh, services or products, such as credit reports mm -hmm. and credit scores, which now banks use to inform their lending decisions. That's right. That's what a builder does. Mm -hmm. uh, so to your question, how do we... So the question is, most SMEs are financially excluded. Yeah. Uh, what can we do as a builder to bridge that gap? Uh, so that's a very fundamental question, but I, I want also to take you back to um, to what a bureau does to enable financial inclusion for mm, SMEs. That's right. Uh, so we look at the institution, um, so that they, they, they maybe the company that's looking for capital from the bank. So <clears throat> uh, banks are looking out for you know opportunities to lend, yes. and they are targeting those. Um, Companies, but the challenge is that the banks don't have enough information about how these institutions are borrowing or mm. even repaying mm. uh, their debts. So that information gap is what we bridge as a bureau. So for the institution, we look at whether it's a registered entity. Yeah. That's very important mm. because the bank wants to deal with a legit company. Yeah. So we are able to provide or validate uh, the registration number of that entity. We also look at the shareholders behind the company. Mm. Who are they? Do they have uh, credit obligations? Because the bank doesn't want to be in a scenario where they lend the money to the company, but you know the shareholders or the promoters take away the money and use it for other things. Mm. So we also be able to, to, to assess, we provide credit history about those individuals. 
And then the narrative, you know, what we call the creative narrative, the mm -hmm. repayment and debt profiles of that entity. Mm -hmm. Now, all that combined together is what we, we call the nanny in video credit report. Yeah. So the bank now look at that report and assess if this institution is quite worthy or not. And also most importantly, Chris, is uh, the credit score. Yeah. Yeah, credit score is very important. It's, it gives a bank a, a, a summary of someone's level of risk. Mm. Um, so the lower your credit score, the higher the risk. If your credit score is high, then uh, you are credit worthy person. Mm. Uh, so that's what we do as a, as a bureau, and I, I'm, I'm very confident that data is now the currency. Mm. It's the future of transaction. Everyone out there is looking for the data to inform their, their you know, in-house or internal decision making. But besides what we provide as a bureau, it's also very profound for this institution to keep a proper record because mm -hmm. the bank also look at cash inflow of that entity. That's right. Uh, they will, uh, is the institution able to repay the loan if they are given uh, a credit facility? Okay. Increasing likelihood uh, to access to finance for SMEs mm -hmm. is, of course, something that uh, credit reference bureaus uh, uh, streamline. No doubt. However, when you look at uh, most SMEs in Uganda, mm -hmm. we, we are still grappling with the fundamentals and the basics. For example, uh, bookkeeping. Yeah. Uh, the ability to show that for the last three months, this has been my outflow. This, this is what we've put into the, uh, the business in terms of operations and uh, you know, investment, and these are the profits, and this is what perhaps we are paying workers. Before or for example, not even before, if you encounter an MSME mm -hmm. that is grappling with that particular inability to bring forth that data, but could be credit worthy if mm -hmm. at all they are able to put it together. Do you help them do that, compound yeah, yeah. it? Uh, so we are very interesting, and thank mm. you so much for the question. We are part of, um, so for us, as I said, data is a currency. Data is currency, yeah. We don't sit back in the office to wait for data mm -hmm. because we receive data from 33 financial institutions, mm -hmm. which are regulated by the Central Bank of Uganda. But also at an individual level, for us, we look at credit referencing as an enabler, not a compliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want this data to unlock an opportunity for an entity to acquire a loan, for, for an individual to acquire a loan from the bank. So we have designed what we call a, a, digital, um, a digital credit curriculum. Mm -hmm. So this curriculum entails details that help the institution to organize their data. Uh, so we, we give them tips on how they can use Excel, for example, if they, they cannot manage um, a robust information management system, mm. you know, to keep their e cash inflow, their expenses, you know, to have some sort of check and balances in their finances, so that when time comes for them to acquire a loan, they have a proper record, mm. you know, a track of record that the bank can look at and, you know, get a deep understanding of how this individual this institution is operating. Okay, just take us through your own assessment or the team's assessment of uh, how much we are looking at in terms of unmet uh, financial financing needs for S MSMEs in the country. What is the amount of money that is yet to be unlocked or, well, unleashed? I mean, um, as I said, uh, banks are on a journey on a quest to look out for potential borrowers, yes. individuals and company. Mm. Um, currently, we are part of a project is SME Recovery Fund, mm -hmm. um, being funded by MasterCard, and they have put up about 25 million US dollars. Yeah. You know? it's, and this money is, is, is going to be given to, to financial institution to lend SMEs an individual. Mm. So just that, that's one of the example. And a couple of other banks, you know, mm. uh, looking out, they have so much money they are willing to invest. But as I say, it's really the question of the information about these prospective yeah, about borrowers. about the prospective borrowers. Yes. Okay. And then the unbanked population uh, in the rural areas uh, that virtually don't even appreciate the need to have information to provide it to be able to uh, gain access to finance. Yeah. So it's a mindset change, as I said, uh, for us as a bureau, we are on a journey to unlock that potential. Mm. Yeah, we want people to be credit worthy. worthy, we want them yeah. to be responsible. Mm. You know, there is one aspect of going to the bank and, and get a loan, mm. but there also there is the aspect of being responsible to pay back That's right. that loan. So uh, most people actually fear 
fear to borrow. And I think it was yesterday I was telling someone, that, you know, I go to the bank to borrow, yeah? But there are also um, a group of individuals that are saving. Mm -hmm. For them, they just want to save. That's right. Yeah, and they are comfortable to do that. But I think when it comes to credit, and if you want to build uh, what we call a reputational collateral, you have to be out there borrowing yes. and paying. So you borrow and be able to uh, be responsible to pay back the loan. So we are encouraging the last mile, first of all, mm. to realize the potential of data. Mm. Data is the asset. That's right. Uh, so we have put up tools, uh, smartphone application, SME, I mm. mean USSD application that enables the individual first to monitor their credit score. Yeah. We are able to give you tips on how to keep your credit score positive. Because mm. if you don't pay your loan on time, that negatively affects your score. That's right. Uh, if you wait your loan to be in areas or overdue, then it's affecting your score. So we are training people to be responsible, but also to be aware of how important uh, a credit score is, how important the credit report is. And we are also working with the different players in the space to start building what we call a consumer credit score. Mm. A score you can use to acquire fuel, for example, and credit. We know how expensive fuel is these days. Yeah. So how can data now unlock some of those services? Fuel on credit. On credit, okay. you know, using a credit score. Uh -huh. So those are some of the services, actually, we are bringing in the space somehow to disrupt how things are, but also, mm -hmm. you know, to, to um, kind of empower the borrowers to understand that a credit score is my reputational collateral. I have to keep it positive. That's right. And it can enable me to acquire a number of services on credit. Okay. Talking about the spectrum of uh, credit reference bureaus right now, mm -hmm. could you take us through what we have in Uganda? Because you say uh, new grid is uh, the first indigenous yeah. uh, credit reference bureau yeah. uh, to be added on the already established uh, bureaus. I want you to take me through the spectrum, how we are right now, but most importantly, mm -hmm. uh, tackle the aspect of data security. Data security. Yeah. Very important. So um, in terms of the number of institutions or number of bureaus in the country, mm -hmm. we are three. Um, the Bank of Uganda, I think, in 20, 2005, um, they opened up the space to allow other uh, players, entities, yeah. players, to come into the space. Mm -hmm. So originally we had uh, Comscan, uh, and after opening up the market, we had uh, Metropol to join. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are the third bureau. So we are three bureaus in the space that mm -hmm. are offering, you know, slightly similar solutions. So we're being more competitive, uh, more innovative, mm -hmm. but also given that it's a competitive space uh you know that lowers the cost of borrowing mm. yeah um in terms of data security and we we are aware of the data protection act uh that was passed uh as a bureau uh we are mandated first of all to keep the borrower's data very secure mm. we go through a very robust um due diligence by the central bank of Ukraine before we are even given a license to operate so they check out our servers, the securities behind those infrastructures, and we made sure actually we met all those um, requirements. But also on the side of the borrower, um, as a bureau, we require the lender to acquire a consent, you know, before we can actually issue out your credit report or mm. credit score to that institution. So um, even the individual, if they want to come to the bureau and acquire a report, we ask them for uh, a consent. Mm. And we are able to validate uh, the borrower's identification document, like uh, the NIN number, for example, the URSB number. So we are able to cross-check with the different institutions that provide this identification document to make sure we are issuing out your credit report to the right person. So that's a kind of uh, measures and procedures we are putting in place to make sure people's data is not out there. You know, it's not out there in the space. And again, I want to emphasize that as a bureau, we don't just share data. Mm. It must be accompanied by a consent, and it's only the credit institutions that actually access some of these services. 
Okay, that's uh, very reassuring, especially for those that are watching out there and uh, might be uncomfortable uh, when it comes to sharing some of this uh, information because on average, a Ugandan who is registering for anything, it could mm -hmm. be not necessarily alone, is taken through just about the same process for every registration process they undertake. You're yeah. told national ID, go and bring this and this, mm -hmm. go and bring the same. Yet, we would expect that uh, since there's been a spectrum of registration platforms that names and other information has already been inputted there is uh, the ability to simply go and find out exactly what this particular information is and then sequence it with whatever you are doing than having a client a potential client mm -hmm. who could be an MSAB go through the elaborate that and yeah. you know that very tedious I don't know how is that being done to ensure that it is because <laughs> it could affect the likelihood to access credit yeah at definitely some point. yeah a very important question, and uh, it's still work in progress. Mm. I want to say that Nira has, has done a great job to issue out um, the identifications. Yes. yes. Uh, but also at the Bureau, we are able to cross-reference mm. that system via an API. So we are able to validate. What is an API? Um, in simple terms, it's more like a bridge between okay. two platforms. Mm. So we are able to check. If you come to to us and you have a nationality, mm. we don't just take that as the gospel truth. Okay. So we have to cross check cross with NIDA yeah. to make sure this is a varied identification document. So for us, that's what we call a digital identity. Mm. So people can actually be identified digitally without necessarily carrying all those defined paperwork. And we do merging of identifications. For mm. example, we can merge your national ID with your driving permit, you know, so that all these are can be accessed digitally via a single digit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's also a very important aspect in, in enabling financial inclusion because banks want to know the kind of people they are dealing with. But also for um, for the last mile credit consumers, there are a couple of other initiatives. Mm. Of course, there is the access of uh, the national identification document um, and and. and and a lot of in, uh, individuals out there acquiring these documents. Uh, so we are using them to profile their credit history and debt profiles. Allow me to ask you a general question that uh, might not be necessarily within the Credit Reference Bureau mm -hmm. uh, spectrum and uh, tackle the economy as things are going right now. We know the fuel prices are high, the price of uh, basic uh, commodities mm -hmm. in our households that we need uh, is really high. The services themselves, uh, people forget <laughs> that the services are also now unaffordable. Yeah. Where the economy right now is, MSMEs are grappling with approaches and models to business that they should be able to cope. Others are unable to come out of the effects of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Others that were able to come out of the COVID-19 pandemic effects and everything that it did to them, again, found themselves head on with the Ukraine and uh, Russia war mm -hmm. and all that that happened. Where should the MSME focus right now if we are to ensure this economy stays on course? Very, very good question. Um, I mean, I'm part of that journey. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur. That's right. <clears throat> and I have gone through this kind of challenges as a business. Mm -hmm. You know, inflation has not just come to the country. <laughs> this is part of uh, the, the things we do as a business. Mm. But um, as of now, I think SMEs need to build sustainable business models. Uh, that can stand a test of time. Mm. Yeah, of course, I talked of the recovery fund. Uh, there are a couple of initiatives that are being put in place to edit some of these initiatives to mm. come out of that uh, pandemic and a couple of other things that are happening. But at the business, you need to have a sustainable business model that can enable you, um, you know, succeed or go through this, um, some of these challenges. Mm. And also uh, be able to, to, to be flexible to, you know, adjust a few things when you are hit with this kind of uh, blocks and challenges. Mm. Uh, so, and of course the banks are there, you know, um, to 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 lend to this institution to to stay afloat but also to be resilient through these kind of challenges uh so i talked of a recovery fund where now the interest rate is more um manageable manageable yeah so mm. you know smes individuals can actually go and borrow money at a manageable interest rate the other aspect is that uh, if you have a positive score, then you, you stand a chance to bargain 
you mm. know, the, the interest on your loan. So these are some of, you know, channels through which institutions can actually can use to, uh, to manage and be resilient in this kind of situations. Okay, thank you very much. I'm glad that you've uh, divulged some of that information as an entrepreneur yourself, because yeah. uh, out there, there are those that think that it's doom and uh, there are no avenues uh, that uh, they can, of course, adopt uh, to be able to survive your Closing remarks. Uh, closing remarks, uh, and I think before I close, Chris, yeah. I want to ask if you okay. have ever... <laughs> <laughs> you're, turning you the, active, you're turning the yes, tables yes, on me as an I interviewer. All right. Um, are you an active borrower? Have you ever borrowed money? Yes, I've borrowed money several uh, times. Have you looked at your credit score? Yes, I've reviewed my credit score. It's not stellar. I must mm -hmm. say, but there is uh, ongoing effort to ensure everything is streamlined so that I can have a score that is uh, favorable to me. Nice. And of course, uh, something that uh, whoever is out there and can extend uh, credit to mm -hmm. me is able to do it with a lot more ease and comfort. Mm. Mm. Great. So looking at your, your kind score, what does it mean to you as an individual? As an individual, it gives me a point of reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do we move forward? Do we follow? I I personally don't do. I don't like to be in debt, mm -hmm. but debt is inevitable. Yeah. There is productive debt, but there is also bad debt. Yeah. I'm ensuring I get off the bad debt mm -hmm. and be in productive debt. Nice. Yeah, and the score helps me see which trajectory is best for me. Great. Yeah, but this is my show. I won't allow you to ask me <laughs> any more questions. We're going to have yeah, to end I would, it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Your closing remarks. Yeah, so my closing remarks, um, um, I want to remind uh, the viewers out there um, that data is the currency. So we invite you to actually, um, you know, be start with uh, our, our offices um, to, to, to learn more about your credit score. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, every Ugandan is entitled to a free credit report every year. So you can utilize this, this chance. But also I want people to be uh, more responsible for their debt, you mm -hmm. know, please uh, pay your debt. Uh, go out there and build your credit uh, history, acquire loan from the bank. And for us as a bureau, we'll be able to build, you know, credit scores and credit report for you to, to access more financial services in a number of financial institutions. Um, yeah, I think for me, that's, those are my uh, closing okay. remarks. I'll allow, nice I'll allow just one thing and mm -hmm. uh, very quickly. Is it uh, prudent or does it make sense to borrow money when you don't need it, but you have to ensure that there is a score you either mm -hmm. want to build? It won't make sense. Won't I think sense. you need to have a reason. You must have you a must purpose have a why too. you are borrowing. Because mm. if you go by that, you are most likely to default and you'll be in the bad books of the banks. Okay. Yeah. Right. So have a purpose. Make sure whatever reason you are borrowing for must replicate and build a sustainable business. All right, many thanks. David Opio, the Chief Executive Officer at New Grid Credit Reference Bureau, one of just three in the country that are offering uh, this uh, very pertinent service to micro, small, and medium enterprises, but of course also the big businesses to ensure that access to finance, the ability to be able to get longer term loans on lower interest rates, as well as a share of uh, working capital that is uh, financed by banks across the country is uh, good enough. It's been a pleasure. Of course, I hope this information has emboldened your understanding of things and matters. Credit, we do hope you build yourself a positive credit score. That's taking note. watching morning at NTV.